Hi there, and welcome to the daily chapter reading of Some of It Was Real. Viva Voce Practice. No infringement. By the time we get back to the hotel, it's almost 8 p.m. We're both exhausted. Room service, I ask? Sylvie finds the menu. I settle Chris on the couch and immediately moose climbs beside her. She gets up cautiously, like her bones might snap, and curls in the curve of her dog's thick neck. He moves his head closed, so she's encircled. Thank you, I say, and for the first time, run a hand along Cujo's silky black head. He allows it, one brow cocked, as if asking, what took you so long? I sit beside him, scratch behind each ear and his belly when he lifts one massive haunch for a rub. When the food comes, Sylvie whisks off the silver domes to reveal breakfast for dinner. Belgian waffles, banana pancakes, orange juice, and a platter of fruit. Breakfast, I ask? She grins. When I was a kid and got into a fight with mom, dad would make me apologize. Even if it wasn't your fault? Her smile dips. In our house, it was always my fault. Anyway, on those nights, Hannah skipped supper, so it was just the two of us. Dad always cooked breakfast, chocolate chip pancakes, blueberry waffles, whatever I wanted. It was his way of saying he was sorry. She smothers the waffles with maple syrup, takes a big fork full, and says between bites, it made me feel better. Unconvinced, I take a bite. Sugar floods my mouth. It does taste good. We share both the waffles and the pancakes. I'm too full for the fruit plate, but Sylvie dusts it. When she's done, she reaches out, grazes my lower lip, and holds up a finger dot with syrup. You saving this? Thanks. Don't mention it. She licks her finger, and heat travels its natural course. I gulp down some cold orange juice. I'll take the couch if Moose will share it. If we could sleep in my childhood double bed without a problem, we'll be okay on a queen mattress, Sylvie jokes. I smile, but there was definitely a problem in her childhood bedroom. That's why I end Ed up on the window seat. Are you just being nice to me because I cried like a big baby? Sylvie shrugs. Maybe. By the time I come out of the bathroom in my t-shirt and boxers, Moose is snoring. Chris asleep beside him. Sylvie climbs under the down duvet. She wears only the white flannel top of her PJs and her long legs gleam in the lamplight. My body instantly responds and it takes serious effort to keep things under control. When I check the closet for an extra blanket, there isn't one. Sylvie watches me. I'll be on top of the covers. She puts a pillow in the center of the bed, then folds back the duvet on my side. My safety is ensured. Thanks. I turn off the lamp, climb in, silence settles, but I can tell Sylvie isn't asleep. I ask. What really happened last night in your parents' bedroom? Bathroom. Why do you want to know? Why do I? To understand you better. I ask, you've already decide, decided who I am. I ask, what if I haven't? Tell me what happened the night your father died. I already did. It was wet out, dark. His car hit a guardrail, went off a bridge. Sylvie rolls to face me. My eyes have adjusted, and in the dim light, I can see the contours of her face, the curve of her lips. Why was she right about the rain? What? The male spirit that came forward during your reading said she was right about the rain. Do you remember everything you've ever said? Most of it. Was it your dad talking about your mom? Maybe she didn't want him to drive that night? My chest squeezes. Stop it. She presses. Tell me, and I'll tell you what really happened in my parents' bathroom. She won't share if I don't. It was Saturday night. We were watching our favorite movie. Sylvie murmurs, you take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. My muscles clench. She wrote that on her skin when we met her in her dressing room. Those were Deacon's favorite lines in the movie. Sylvie watches me. I can smell the mint of her toothpaste, see the outline of her hips beneath the covers, feel the electricity between us. I'm suspended in this moment. The forces of gravity, relativity, elasticity, cause and effect, that there's no such thing as a psychic medium, fill a glass. Am I willing to throw it onto concrete, shatter everything I believed to close the distance between us?
there will always be a rational explanation for what Sylvie says, writes, hums, and knows. I'm a journalist. My career is based on logic, facts, and unequivocal truth. Over the past 48 hours, I've wavered, but in the end, I can't let go of that glass for the chance to hold her. Thomas, what do those words mean? Despite my decision, I tell her. It's what Morpheus said to Neo in the movie The Matrix when he gave Neo the opportunity to know what was really happening in their world. I wanted to pause the movie, do an ice cream run. Mom said it was raining too hard. Dad went out anyway. He died that night. Why didn't you go with your dad? Because Deacon and I played rock, paper, scissors to see who got to go with dad. Deacon won. They both died. I roll onto my back, stare at the ceiling. I just didn't. Now tell me what happened in your parents' bathroom.